So this is an office hour session where I was uh, guest mentoring uh, with Zano. And uh, the person who needed help here, Aaron, originally described her problem as needing to strip out control characters uh, from her payload uh, because it was causing problems with the JSON parsing that was going back and forth. As we dig deeper into it, you're going to find that we peel back the layers of not needing to deal with as many concerns. And you're going to find there's a broad lesson here of applying simplification as opposed to trying to just dive in directly at the immediate error message that we're looking at. Uh, watch all the way to the end in order to be able to see how this whole thing evolves, and I hope you find it helpful. Um, I'm pulling in data that's coming through a web form. Yep. form. Uh, I've pasted in some sample data. And in this particular form, I put an extra line break in it. Uh, I process that data, save some records, and then kick off a notification via SendGrid. And SendGrid hates the line break. And my method for removing the line break, which is to take out the slash n, is apparently not removing the control character. So what yep. is this further control character concept and how can I clean it out of text? Well, how to get into there in the first place? Like, at what point are we creating the JSON for all this? Uh, can you tell me where like the formatted data is coming from? Yeah, it's coming from Webflow. It's a field on Webflow where people can put in tabs and line breaks. If sure thing. like I can't them. L let's look at this from the point of view of inputs and outputs. Uh, let's mm -hmm. look at if this is a if this is an endpoint. Uh, let's go back over to, uh, let's start, we'll, we'll start within Xano. We might look at this in Webflow in a second, but uh, if I could get you to close up these two uh, sidebars here, you know, by using the little X in the corner. Yeah, cool. We'll scroll to the top, please. Um, mm -hmm. The very tippy top. Very top. Yep. There we go. You see that uh, three dots in the upper right-hand corner? Yes. Let's click that and let's take a look at the request history and let's see what's come in the door from Webflow uh, that's causing. Let's, since this is being recorded, let's not use my client's real data. So I will open. That's fine. Would you like me to stop recording? I can do that. Um, that works too. I can also, I have, uh, I prepared some data beforehand. This is exactly what's coming in. And okay. the field that's causing the trouble is right here. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, there's that. Well, okay. So that, that so far, that doesn't seem, okay. So far, this is properly formatted uh, JSON, which is excellent. So now let's scroll on down and, and can you tell me more about like uh, what SendGrid is saying it doesn't like? Yes. So what happens when I, well, first of all, to try and take out that control character, mm -hmm. I replace my slash N with just an additional yeah. space. We'll need to do something else in a minute. Don't, don't worry about, yes, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate why it didn't work. Uh, so we'll we'll work that problem just a second. I just want to make sure we go through the whole cycle of seeing how it comes in and what, what message we got coming out to make sure we're fixing the right thing. Okay, roger that. So then the message is uh, when I get to send grid, sending it out uh, sorry, Twilio in this case, but it happens for both Twilio and SendGrid. Um, they don't like the control character. Well, let's find out if that's actually the case. Let's go to the debugger, please. Oh, you get down to results. Result is the inquiry, maybe. Let's go, let's debugger. Uh, let's click on debugger and go all the way to the bottom for me. Uh-huh, so it gets a Twilio send SMS. Uh-huh, and the input is, what are we trying to send uh, send into there? Uh, so what I'm sending into Twilio is yes. um, the phone number to send it to the body of the text. This is where the problem is happening. So I create the body of the text in this variable and JSON decoded. I see. So um, then there's a question of why we would... Uh, okay, so, so so the body is the body that's over there, which includes the JSON or what have you. That that part's in there. So what what would happen ideally is I would strip the incoming stuff of any of its existing control characters, mm -hmm. and then as necessary could re-encode it because as you can see, I'm sending a lot of data in this. It's a notification to someone that a new lead has come in. So yes. I need to give this different line breaks than is in the original. Uh-huh. Okay. So basically what we're saying is when we do this stuff, so, so the body is just going to be a string at the end, right? Right. 
Okay, let's go to Twilio send SMS on number 17. It's not obvious to me why uh, why we're not just putting body directly into um in, into that item instead of using the, the sprint F with the JSON decode. Yeah, so I um, could hypothetically apply the JSON decode right here on the body itself, but I do this in so many places throughout my app that I have just found this to be, if I always do it this way, then if I have additional stuff as well, then I know I, I just do it throughout the whole entire app. Okay, so let's let's go over to the body for a second. Uh, now, and this is starting to, to to gel for me. So we click into this, and then uh, presumably the field name that has the weird thing is somewhere in here. Yeah, it, it the the field name got saved into a record called inquiry as the field intake message. Okay, so here's my propose. Uh, so the intake. So can we find? Can we maybe do before we do the create variable? So before line sixteen. Let's do a stop and debug and take a look at what inquiry intake message is right now. Happy to. Uh, these um, these cleanup type things, we, I mean, we can we can throw a couple pieces of spaghetti against the wall for it, but I find they really reward look at, just taking eighty percent of the time to look at the inputs and the outputs, and then twenty percent of the time on the actual uh, fix of it. So let's. Uh, yeah. I think you called it uh, inquiry. Right? Is inquiry dot uh, yes. intake message? Do you want to see the whole record that comes out, or do you want to see my reformatted intake message I'm putting into that record? Uh, actually, let's show me line 17 first. Let's before we do that, let's go back into line 17 and ask what actually is getting fed into line 17, so we can answer that question just a little bit better. It's using the uh, inquiry record. Okay, let's use let's use the inquiry version of it. Uh huh, and then we'll uh, just re rerun it over on the right. I have to repaste. Forgets things so fast, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the intake message is a couple of different shades of light pink and white, twelve. Okay. So the issue we have here is you have a weird mix of stuff that is encoded and not encoded uh, in your in in your. Uh, so let's uh over on the left hand side here. Uh, let's scroll down to number 17, which is where your is it 17. Yeah, so 17, 17 is a weird animal. Let's look at 17 for a second. Because 17 uh, is you are trying to create basically JSON encoded text at this point. Right. So mm -hmm. um and and I'm not a huge fan of using sprintf, but the um the the and partially because it makes it easy to make this kind of of slight bit of error. What I think is going on here is that each of these data points you're inserting in are not themselves JSON encoded, but you're expecting that the result is going to be JSON encoded. Right? So that the I'm that, not that, expecting that anything in this step is fully JSON encoded because although I'm putting in the slash ends, I don't have like the quotes around it. So I'm basically pre Oh no, but it is, it, it is all JSON encoded. This is a JSON encoded string. So when you use the backslash n, you're using actually JSON encoding for that job, and then you're JSON decoding it subsequent. Does that make sense? Uh oh, okay. I follow now. Thank you. Okay. Got it. So Right. So the um, so so here is so you have a couple of techniques we can use uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to 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 work with this. Okay. Um, one is, uh, and, and I might actually recommend that we do a duplicate of the create variable right now, uh, so that you can so you have a couple of options available to you. So let's take let's take number seventeen and let's clone it. And then we'll comment out the clone that way. Yeah, right. Now let's go back into your create variable. So my proposal here is instead of worrying about stripping things out, let's add the encoding so everybody's at the same level. Because the goal is the final text, the string up here is supposed to be JSON encoded. That's what because has the backslash ends to it. So the way, so then what you want is for the stuff inside that you're worried might not be JSON encoded to itself get JSON encoded. So let's scroll down just a little bit. And this becomes cool because now instead of trying to strip out control characters, you're kind of re-encoding them back in. So let's take the query intake message and let's uh, click on that guy for a second. And we're going to add a filter to it. And the filter the is JSON the code. JSON encode. Right, that'll take all your control characters or you know new lines, whatever, and it will turn them into JSON-friendly format that will then compose into the rest of this correctly. 
Let me um, come and undo my attempt to add stripping then. No, it's not that one. Where is it? Here we go. The reason why the stripping didn't work is because it's looking for the literal string backslash n, but the thing inside your intake message uh, is that it's, um, I, I think that that's already the, um, that, that, that's already been decoded uh, from your JSON, right? So what you really were trying to say is please replace new lines with a blank, which we can do. It's more complicated, but it's also the long way around. This, I think, gets you the, where you want to go more directly. Okay. All right, so now my slash n is still in there when it gets saved. Do we know whether it will save it as slash n or if it's going to read it as a control character? Or well, should I run it really? Let's find out. Okay. Uh, so do we save this already? Okay, hopefully we did. Um, I might not have. I will come back and uh, do that in just a moment, but this is before that step so let's, let's just check out number yeah let's try that uh okay it did save it as a control character and i'm gonna just double check that i did make the change i thought i made okay i saved my original i came here and i took off that uh -huh. adjustment okay. and let's make sure that we have the json link code in like line 19 or whatever that is yes yeah, uh, yeah. Good. It, all good. Okay. Great. Let's comment out the stop and debug and let's see if it goes through the same grid correctly. Oh, sorry. I need to paste it again. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what the JSON is after line 19. So let's do the stop and debug after line 19 to find out what it has to say. Oh, stop and debug after 19. Okay. Moving. I have to move my video. In fact, um, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And now we're having it return the body. Body, right, exactly. Let's, let's, let's see what this thing looks like at this point. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the quotation marks that are still in there. Uh, yes. And that's probably from a different piece of it? Or is that also from the message? Um, that I don't remember manually adding quotation marks. And I'm also noticing now it has slash and oh yeah, and it, it changed my like 10 to 12 foot, uh, the apostrophe got changed to this. U27, yep, that's a that's a nice apostrophe. That's not that's not terrible. Okay. okay. So th that's all just like new lines. I wouldn't worry too much about that stuff right in here. Um, okay. So the, um, the, 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 but however, the quotation mark is invalid. So let's take a look at your create variable on line 18. On 18, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's your intake message. So uh, let's, uh, actually, I kind of suspect it's in the primary text. Let's go back up to your primary text. Um, oh, sorry, uh, in body, right? So let's go back to number 19. You uh, mean 19, uh, 18, I did mean 18, I apologize. No worries. Okay, you see where it says text at the top? No, no, no I don't oh, want to look at these guys again, yeah. Right. I, I, I think it's, it's in the structure. Yeah. So can we open that guy up and use the expander so we can see more of it? Um, messages percent S. All right. All right. Okay. So the issue is, uh, got it. Now I'm starting to understand. So the issue is that the message, that, that when we encoded it, it gave it with the quotation marks. So then we just need to trim off the quotation marks in order for that to work properly. So let's go back into number. Um, Let's go back into the, the, the message that we're inserting into here. Mm -hmm. And uh, just do left trim out of trim one. Yeah. After doing the JSON encode, yeah. And it, uh, you just... The, the, oh, the no, quotation mark, the quotation mark. There we go. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's for you, okay. Oops. Mm -hmm. Clear to the wrong spot. Here we go. But no, you're good. The trim is left and right. Oh, that did 
both sides. I only did Eltrin. Oh, is that? Oh, you did do only do Eltrin. My apologies. Yes, you, you were. You were. Your intuition was correct. Except I think there's one called just Trim. Oh my goodness, you're right. Okay, well, cool. Thank you. That's why I thought you were doing it first, and then I just got caught up. Okay, right. let's try. Re let's try rerun. Yeah, rerun it with the stop and debug. Uh, uh, once again, we gotta clean up the input and. All right, and I have stop and debug on. Okay. All right, this looks a lot better. So now try commenting out the stop and debug and shipping it. <laughs> Santa was quite forgetful. So. Okay. So, so end yeah. code it, remove the quotation marks. It seems like it would be easier to just take what's coming in and remove control characters, unless removing control characters is kind of a monster. Uh, you uh, Removing control characters, you're going to try to remove everything except for a certain subset of stuff, and that makes life much more messy. What, what the, uh, My recommendation actually would be, like, let's take a look at the body here for a second in this create variable on line 18. Uh, look at the debugger or uh, no, look line. at the create variable for a second. You're using these backslash ends and you don't gotta. So let's click into the, the value thing here and let's expand it. So here's my proposal backslash over, see where it says uh, backslash n, the first one after new inquiry? Yeah. Press enter. Just make them into new lines. Now you don't have any more of that. Um, the, now you don't need to JSON encode or decode anything. You take JSON out of the equation. Except that what arrived originally had a slash n in it. So did that yes. get just properly handled when I saved it? Yep, because it decodes it and encodes it. You're allowing the 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 transformers that come with the system to do that job for you. There okay, is no so more I backslash n at that point. Okay, rather than, rather than meeting the input, how it's coming in, and then changing all of it before the output, trust that Xano is handling that for me. Okay. I will hang out on mute for a little bit and try this without yeah. the slash ends and might hold on to you for just a very moment after everyone else is gone if I hit trouble. I'd be glad to help. Okay. Awesome. Everyone, thank you so much. A uh, quick note at the end here, uh, Aaron uh, stayed on the call uh, to implement some things we talked about at the very end and reported back through chats uh, that she was able to uh, you know, get the whole thing working without having to do any of the JSON decoding at all. So let that be a lesson for us all, simplification for the win.